Rotary International President-Elect, Rotarian Shekhar Mehta, District Governor, Rotarian Shabir Shakir, District Interact Chair, Rotarian Virendra Patrikar, Model UN Assembly Host Club President, Jatin Sampath, participants in the International Model United Nations Assembly and friends. I am delighted to participate in the inaugural of the International Model United Nations Assembly being organized by Rotary International District 3030. I commend the Rotary International District 3030 for this initiative in spite of the challenges in the COVID era to organize such an event. I am particularly delighted to see the participation of such a large and enthusiastic group of young people engaged on global issues. You are the leaders of tomorrow. You will represent India and indeed other countries in the United Nations of tomorrow. You will come together to find solutions to problems and issues of tomorrow. And when you do that, you will discover for yourself that it is good for this world that the United Nations exists. Friends, this is a particularly significant year for the UN. This year, we mark the 75th anniversary of the signing of the United Nations Charter and the establishment of the UN. It's also an important time for India since we are poised to enter the United Nations Security Council for the eighth time starting on the 1st of January 2021. India's association with the UN goes all the way back to its founding moments. I'm sure you know that in 1945, even before we gained independence, India was among the very first signatories of the Charter at the historic San Francisco Conference. Two distinguished Indians signed the original Charter. 75 years on, India remains committed to the purposes and principles of the UN and is proud to have made significant contributions to implementing the goals of the Charter and the evolution of UN's agenda. We have undertaken many pioneering initiatives at the UN. India has played a very important role in shaping the UN's agenda, taking the lead on issues of decolonization, apartheid, human rights, disarmament, environment, particularly in climate change and biodiversity, terrorism, developmental issues, etc. Let's not forget that we have always spoken for developing countries long before some of them even secured their own independence. We continue to do so. India's voice has been a voice of reason, equity and principles and a voice against injustice. India has always spoken out for what is good, for what is just, for, for what brings us together rather than what divides us for what saves this planet, whether from climate change or from terrorism, or for what brings about development and progress and makes the United Nations more human-centric. As youngsters, you should never forget the Im immense contribution India has made for peace, progress and development of mankind. We have a unique voice and we have never hesitated to raise it for the sake of making this world a better place, especially for all our partner nations. I mention this particularly since the United Nations has come under criticism due to increasing differences and fissures among its member states. The complexities of the issues it deals with have also increased. That doesn't mean that the United Nations or multilateralism per se is under threat. It just means that we need to relook the way the United Nations is functioning and undertake reforms to make it more effective. Prime Minister Modi has called it and called for reformed multilateralism. We need to understand that we have multilateralism, but we haven't yet factored in multipolarity, where other countries are playing a major role in world affairs. Countries like India need to have a voice in the Security Council and other decision-making organs of the United Nations to bring about this change. The structure and composition of the Security Council remains a product of the 1940s. The time is now to reform the Security Council so that it represents the global realities of today. This means that Africa, Latin America and countries like India, which represents one-sixth of humanity, must have adequate representation on the Security Council. 
There are, of course, those who want to stop India and other countries and do not want to see any change. We are working hard to bring genuine reforms since it's important for youngsters like you who are going to represent India and your respective countries in the future. The current pandemic, though it has brought untold grief to many, has, however, given us an opportunity to build back better in the post-COVID world. Towards this end, we need to recapture the spirit of constructive cooperation to come up with innovative and inclusive solutions. Friends and participants, one of the preeminent purposes of the United Nations Charter is to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The world's gravest danger today is terrorism. When sponsored and supported by states, terrorism becomes another means of waging war. The international community must resolve to compact this menace since it threatens the very basis of peaceful, pluralistic, democratic societies like ours. Further, United Nations peacekeeping operations have played an important role in maintaining peace and security by protecting civilians and preventing human rights violations arising from conflict. As you know, India has a very proud legacy of shouldering this responsibility for more than 60 years by not only providing the largest number of peacekeeping troops, but also having lost more peacekeepers than any other country. As you undertake your deliberations in the model UN, do not forget that the UN Charter is as much for the people of the world as it is for the member states. We need to focus on human-centric solutions and use modern tools to make human lives better. It is relevant to you as you are the leaders of tomorrow who will find solutions for the world which you inherit. For example, we need to see how best we can leverage digital technology to enhance implementation of numerous goals which UN has set for itself. Another example is combating environmental problems which are existential for many amongst us. India's emphasis on development and development cooperation is yet another dimension for making this a better world for everyone, especially for developing countries. India has pledged more than $30 billion under lines of credit and several billions more as development partnership to developing countries. We have one of the largest training and human resource development outreach under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program. Friends, let me once again commend Rotary International District 3030 and the organizers for bringing you all together on this important platform of the model United Nations. Please remember that India will be a voice of hope and change including when you take our place in the Security Council in a month from now, particularly in the COVID and the post-COVID world. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, and I quote, peace will not come out of a clash of arms, but out of justice lived and done by unarmed nations in the face of odds. Thank you very much.